Hi there, I'm Patrick with PCOWoodcrafting.com. Today I'm going to show you how to build these custom sawhorses. They're really great sawhorses, very heavy duty. And unlike other sawhorses, they're up high, so you don't have to bend over to work on your projects. The lumber I'm going to use for this project is white pine. You can use any kind of lumber that you would like. I just choose white pine because it's very lightweight. The only exception on this project is the top cap boards. Those are yellow pine and they're pressure treated. The construction is mostly two by fours. You have two by four legs right here. You have a two by four bottom support rail, a two by four mid support rail, a one by four top support rail, a five quarter by six inch deck board for the cap. And you also have these wooden dowels as tool holders and then for the feet we're going to use two by sixes that are ripped down to four and a half inches. If you would like more details about this project such as detailed drawings, a shopping list, a cut list, I went ahead and left a link down below in the description with all that information. The lumber you're going to need for this project is one two by six by eight, one two by four by twelve, one 2x4x8, by by 1 1x4x8, by 1 5 quarter by 6 by 8 deck board, and 1 5 8 inch wood dowel stock. The tools you're going to need for this project are a circular saw, a drill, a jigsaw, and an orbital sander with 60 grit paper on it. Other tools you're going to need are a tape measure, a pencil, a speed square, and a chalk line. The drill bits you're going to need are a 5 8 inch paddle bit and a countersink drill bit, either 8 inch or 9 30 seconds. The screws you're going to need are 44 2 1/2 inch stainless steel or coated deck screws and 8 5 8 inch stainless steel or coated deck screws. The way I'm going to show you how to do this project is very simple. First, we're going to cut out all of our boards and pieces and parts. Next, we're going to pre-drill with a countersink drill bit for our screws. And then we are going to assemble the project. Now we're going to start cutting out our pieces and parts. We're going to start with our base feet. So you're going to take your 2 by 6 by 8 foot board to be ripped down and then cut into four pieces at 23 and 7 eighths inches long. Ripping down means cutting a cut from one end to the other going with the grain on one side of the piece of lumber. So the best way to do this is to mark at one end four and a half inches or 11.43 centimeters on one side and then do the same on the back side. Next we will take a chalk line which is a way of marking a line to be cut. You can also use a straight edge if you have an eight foot straight edge but I find the chalk line works best. So what you do is uh, attach the chalk line at your mark at the very front of the board and bring it down to the mark you did on the very back side of the board and give the string a snap. There you have a line to be cut. Now that we've made our chalk line, we're going to go ahead and clamp this board down to the sawhorses. Make sure that your board is out far enough away from the sawhorses so you don't cut into them. And what you do is basically take a couple of carpenter's clamps, one on each sawhorse, and we're just going to go ahead and we're going to clamp those on. Now you're going to take your circular saw and using your guide on your circular saw, you're going to cut down that whole chalk line to rip this board down. Now that you have this board ripped down to the right dimension, you're now going to cut it up into four separate pieces at 23 and 7 eighths inches or 60.6425 centimeters.
After cutting our pieces for our base feet, we're going to go ahead and cut out an arch on the bottom. So taking one of the pieces you just cut out and having the top being the ripped side and the bottom being the factory side, we're going to go ahead and uh, mark an arch to be cut out with our jigsaw. So what we want to do is mark five inches in from both sides, which is 12.7 centimeters. Okay, so we got those two marks. Now what we're going to do at those marks is measure up one inch or 2.54 centimeters. Okay. Now what we're going to do is take one of our other pieces that we cut and use it as a straight edge to connect the two top marks that I made, just like so. Then what we're going to do is take our speed square and bring our marks on the side up to that long line. There. So you can make the straight cuts and just have your feet like that, but I like to have a little bit of an angle cut to it. And so what I did is just take a round edge, such as this saucer for a flower pot, and I'm just gonna go ahead here and meet the um, one side mark up to the top line, just like so. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. It doesn't have to be perfect. So we're going to go ahead and cut this line with our jigsaw. Now that we've made the one cut on our first piece, we're going to use this as a template for all our other pieces. So basically, we'll just take those with the factory side at the bottom, and we're going to go ahead and line them up with all sides here. Then just take our pencil and go ahead and make that mark. Next, we're just going to mark all of our pieces and then make that cut with our jigsaw on all four pieces. Now that all of our arches are cut out, we're going to go ahead and stand up all of our pieces and line them up really good with each other. So they're all in line here. And we're going to be making some marks across the top and the sides. Now we're going to measure in from both sides 10 and an eighth inches or 25.7175 centimeters, which should equal about three and a half inches in the middle. Then we're going to draw a line where we mark those little marks all the way across the top. Now that we made our lines on the top, we're going to go ahead and transfer that line on each board to the front and the back. You want to do this on both sides of each piece. So now that we have all our lines drawn, what we're going to do on one side of these pieces is we're going to mark and pre-drill them. On one side of each piece, between the two um, lines that we drew, I'm going to go ahead and put some dots in to where I want to pre-drill. So I'm going to just, you know, think about maybe about a half inch in from uh, both sides here all the way around. So it'll be a total of four holes. So we want to make our four dots. Doesn't have to be perfect. See? So now, I'm just going to go ahead and pre-drill those with my countersink drill bit. I want to do this on all four pieces on one side only. Now that we have our holes pre-drilled, what I'm going to do is take an orbital sander and get rid of the lines that are around the holes and then sort of smooth up the wood and get rid of the burrs. Do not sand off the lines on the other side of the board because we're going to need those later for lining up our legs. Next we'll be cutting our 2x4s for our bottom and mid support rails. You're going to go ahead and grab your 2x4 by, by 8 foot long board and cut out four pieces at 23 and 7 8 inches long or 60.6425 centimeters.
The next cut will be the top support here, which is a one by four. And using your one by four by eight piece of lumber, you're gonna cut out two pieces at 23 and 7 eighths inches long, or 60.6425 centimeters. The next cut is gonna be your top cap board, which is the five quarter by six inch deck board. What you wanna do is take that eight foot deck board and cut out two pieces at 30 inches long, or 76.2 centimeters. Now we are going to be cutting two by fours for our legs. So what you need to do is take your two by four by 12 foot long board and cut it into four pieces at 33 inches long, or 83.82 centimeters. Now we're gonna take our wooden dowel stock and we're gonna cut up four pieces at four inches long, or 10.16 centimeters. Now that we have all of our pieces and parts cut out, it's time to start pre-drilling our holes with our countersink drill bit. And we're gonna start with these two right here, the bottom and mid support rails. We're gonna go ahead and measure in about three quarters of an inch on top and bottom and drill a hole. We're gonna do this on both sides, on all four pieces. On the one by four top support rail, we're gonna pretty much do the same thing. You're gonna measure in about three quarters of an inch from the sides on the top and bottom and pre-drill holes on both sides. Next, we're gonna go ahead and pre-drill our holes for the top cap. When pre-drilling for our top cap boards, it's a little bit more uh, difficult than uh, with the other boards. So I'm just gonna show you real quick of what we should do here. Um, first, uh, these are our deck boards. We have two of them. And you wanna mark in um, three and three quarters inches on both of them. And you wanna do this on both sides. And we're gonna go ahead and make a line um, where we made that little uh, mark there. Okay, so that's uh, three and three quarters inches in. That's 9.525 centimeters. Now, from the bottom up, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna measure two inches, okay, and make a little dot from the bottom up, a little dot, two inches on our line, which equals 5.08 centimeters. Now, we're gonna make a secondary dot and that's gonna be coming from the top. And that's gonna be one inch. And we're gonna make that dot at one inch. And one inch. And we're gonna do that right on our line. And that one inch is 2.54 centimeters. After both sides are marked with our dots to be drilled, just go ahead with your countersink drill bit and drill where you made those dots. On both sides. Now it's time to pre-drill holes in the bottom of our two by four legs. So now you have your four leg pieces. We only need to drill one hole in these and that's gonna be all at the bottom, inside, in the center. Now that you have all your leg boards laid out like this, we're gonna be measuring up from the bottom up about an inch and a half or 3.81 centimeters and we're gonna put a hole right in the middle of each one of these boards. So I will measure up an inch and a half and just done that to be perfect. We're gonna do this all the way down. Now that we have all of our holes pre-drilled at the bottom down here, what we wanna do next is make some lines for assembly. The lines we're gonna draw on the front of these boards are gonna be for our bottom support rail and our mid support rail. With all of our leg boards flush at one end, this is the bottom that we pre-drilled our holes in, we're gonna measure up three and a half inches and make a mark. Then we're gonna measure up another three and a half inches and make a mark. And then measure up again three and a half inches and make a mark. That measurement in metric is 8.89 centimeters. Next, what we're gonna do is where we made these marks, 
we're going to take our speed square and just make a nice light line. It's just sort of a visual from when we start putting everything together. Before we start the assembly process, I want to take all my pieces and parts and just go ahead and give them a light sanding, you know, where I can't hit it with the sander later, and also just to get the spurs off the edges of the wood where I was cutting and maybe get rid of some of the stamps. Now it's time for assembly. The first thing we're gonna do is attach our legs and our base feet together. So we're gonna go ahead and take one of our uh, base feet, lay it on the ground here on a nice flat surface. Um, we wanna have our two lines um, on the top and that is where our middle leg goes. I'm also gonna use one of the supports here as a shim just to level things out for the leg. And what you want to do is take your leg with the drilled countersunk hole on top and you want to put it in between those two lines and make sure it's flush to the top of our arch there. And then you're just going to go ahead and you're going to put one two and a half inch screw in where you drilled that hole. Now we're going to flip this unit over and we're going to go ahead and first we're gonna square it up with each other. So basically I'm squaring up the base foot with the leg and as you can see it's pretty square. If not we can move it around because it's only one screw in the center on the back. So then what you do is you can see that you have your four holes there already countersunk and we're just gonna go ahead and screw in four two and a half inch screws. Now you go ahead and you make four of these units. Now we're going to go ahead and attach both our 2x4 and 1x4 support rails. Now you're going to take one of your leg bases. You want to make sure that the foot is on the outside and that the lines that you made are on the top. Now these two lines, they're for the bottom support rail. And that's what we're going to install right now. Just one side. We're going to line it up with flush with the side of our leg and we're going to use two and a half inch screws to screw it in. So I just put one screw in and I'm going to keep just one screw. I will not put the second screw in yet. Now it's time to put on the other leg and base. Once again lining it up with our bottom set of lines with the foot on the outside. We're going to slide this under here and line it up so your, your rail is going to be flush with the leg and in between the two lines that you drew at the bottom. And we're going to screw it in with a two and a half inch screw. Just one. We're going to wait to put the other screws in later. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around really just to show you because what we're going to do next is put on our top rail. And you may need to straighten your legs back up again since we used the one screw, but pretty much like so. This is our one by four top support. We're going to line it up with the top and the sides. We're going to put one screw in on each side, which are inch and five-eighths screws. One here on the top and then one right here on the top. So and just put them in. We'll screw the other screws in later. So as you can see we're flush on the top here, flush on the side, flush on the top, flush on the side. Now before we put in our mid support rail we want to go ahead and square everything up. It's good to go around and check to see if it's square, if it needs to be moved a little bit. Um, you can do this because we only used one screw on each corner. 
and you can just go around and see if everything is square and if so we will go ahead and put in our mid support now following the lines here we have this would be our bottom it's our last line that we drew and that's going to be the bottom of our mid support rail so we slide that down here to the line on this side and to the line on the other side and make sure it's sort of flush on both sides and then we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to screw in all four of the two and a half inch screws now we're going to finish screwing in the rest of the boards that we only put one screw in So that completes the assembly process of the legs, feet, and rails. Next we're going to go ahead and install our top cap boards. Here we have the top of the sawhorse here. This is uh, top of our leg, the 2x4. This is the top of the 1x4 support. And then here is our top cap board that you remember we pre-drilled. And if you notice, we pre-drilled one hole really close to the edge. Well that's going to go to the back. Um, the hole that was further away from the edge is going to go to the front where the support is. So what we're going to do is place it on top here and we're going to measure in on the front where the support is. We're going to measure in about one inch on both sides. Okay and then on the sides here we're going to measure in about three inches. Once that is lined up we're going to go ahead and screw in our screws. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pre-drill holes for our wood dowel tool hangers and then go ahead and install the wood dowels themselves. What you want to do is mark down 3 inches or 7.62 centimeters from our top support rail here um, and make a mark. And we're going to do that on both sides. Now we're going to take our 5 8 inch paddle spade drill bit or 1.5875 centimeter drill bit and it is a paddle bit so it has a point on the end here and what we want to do is just put that point right on our dot that we made and then we're just going to start drilling in. At first we're going to do a straight cut then we're going to tilt it up a, just a little bit. Now we want to stop drilling right at the end of where our paddle bit is um, because that's about one inch or 2.54 centimeters and that's about how far we want to go in is about one inch. So uh, that is the same distance to the end of this paddle bit. Now that you've drilled your holes we're going to go ahead and put in our two little pegs. Um, it's really good that you try to clean out as much of the shavings inside your holes so you can get your pegs to go all the way in and maybe sand off the burrs on the outside here before you install these. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of uh, uh, exterior carpenter's wood glue in these holes. Uh, not a whole lot, just put just a uh, little couple of squirts in there like so. Then we're going to take our 4 inch dowel which is 10.16 centimeters long and we're going to slowly push it in to our hole here and we're going to twirl it around so the glue gets all the way around. You can see the glue oozing out there and what you do to clean that up is use a wet rag and you clean up the glue around the edge and any that would be dripping 
and then there you go. After I finished the assembly of both of my saw horses, I went ahead and applied a good quality sealer stain to them just because I keep mine outside. Then I went ahead and installed these chair glides. They're basically little feet with nails in them. I went ahead and put those on the bottom of our base feet to keep the saw horses suspended off the ground. Well, there you go. Your very own custom saw horses. I hope this video helped you out. If you would like more information about outdoor woodcrafting, please visit PCOWoodcrafting.com.